Hello, welcome to Weeding Weird Studio. This is my channel and my name is Sig. Today I will be showing you how to make these adorable pillow monsters. Yes, they're cute, they're cuddly, but you know what? They're fantastic at nighttime security measures. They keep the monsters out of the closets and they keep things from crawling out from under the beds. Or at least I'd like to think so. If you find value in this channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you're interested in instant notifications of any of my new content, please tap the bell button. Now let's get started. To begin, you will need plenty of stuffing and white yarn worsted weight. You will also need velvet yarn super bulky size 6, velvet yarn bulky size 5, black yarn worsted weight, red yarn worsted weight, crochet hook size L and a crochet hook size G, a pair of scissors and one large yarn needle, one stitch marker, and a variety of yarn colors. Worsted weight preferably whatever colors you want that you want to use in your piece this is what will make this monster your own so today we're going to begin with the leg and in order to do the leg you're going to want to use your your velvet yarn your size six bulky velvet yarn and your large hook this is the size 11 or l um, this happens, this hook happens to be what is recommended by, by the manufacturer of the yarn and all the information on the yarn will be in the description box if you're interested in knowing exactly which brand this yarn happens to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by making an adjustable ring. Get that started and then I'm going to crochet six single crochets in that ring and I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm going to slip stitch in that first single crochet and make a chain and then I'm going to single crochet two single crochets in each in each single crochet so that'll leave me with a total of 12 stitches all the way around. And I'm going to slip stitch in the first stitch of the second row. And I'm going to single make a chain. And then I'm going to make two single crochets in that same stitch. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to make a single crochet. And in the third stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. And in the fourth, a single crochet. And in the fifth, two single crochets. I'm going to continue that pattern all the way around. And I should end up with 16 single crochets in this round. I'm going to slip stitch, make a chain. Then I'm going to single crochet in each stitch, giving me a total of 18 stitches. I'll then slip stitch and that will finish row four for me. Then I will do a chain and single crochet, a single crochet in each of the stitches in row five, giving me again a total of 18 stitches. And then I will also repeat this for row six. Again, leaving me with 18 stitches plus a slip stitch and then we will finish off. So my piece should look like this. This is my leg and I will need two of these. So just to quickly recap, your first row is going to be your six single crochets in that adjustable ring. 
then your second row is going to be two single crochets in each of the six single crochets giving you 12 single crochets in that second row and the third row you're going to end up alternating one single crochet and then two single crochets in the same stitch one single crochet and then the next stitch is going to be two single crochets and that's going to leave you with a total of 18 stitches in the third row. Now in your next three rows, so four, five, and six, you're going to just do a single crochet in each of the single crochet stitches, leaving you with a total of 18 single crochets in each row. So now I'm going to um, tell you how I make the toes. You're going to need a total of six toes, three toes for each foot. And how I do this is, I, again, I begin with an adjustable ring. And then I, and then I single crochet, six single crochets in that ring. And I pull that ring tight. And again, I'm going to slip stitch in that first single crochet and then make a chain. And then I'm going to single crochet a single crochet in each of the next stitches. And so that'll give me a six single crochets in the second row. All right, so that's going to give us our first toe, and you're going to need six of those toes. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how to sew all this together onto the foot. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take my large yarn needle and thread that tail on. And then I'm going to take a little bit of stuffing and I'm going to fill my toe. And then I'm going to do a running stitch in that top in the second row. And this is going to allow me to cinch my toe, eh, eh, maybe halfway closed. It doesn't need to be closed all the way, just enough to hold that stuffing in and give it a nice rounded look. Okay, just like so. And then I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to see my first row, my second row, and so about my third row is where I'm going to actually sew, begin to sew my toes on. And so I'm going to, right there looks good. And I'm just going to sew that on around. This velvet yarn is very forgiving in that I don't have to get too crazy about how clean my stitches look because it naturally the yarn naturally hides itself within itself just by virtue of the the plush of the of the yarn it really hides a lot of sins and of course you know just by mere fact of it doing that makes this a great beginner's project it's almost a um no fail So what you want to do is you want to just make sure that that is sewn on really good. So you might, you know, take this and go around a couple of times. Just go ahead and use the length of your tail to do that. 
And then when I return, we will have all three toes sewn on. All right, we are back. And we have two legs with six toes. And I have put the nails on five of those toes. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do to put the nails onto the sixth toe for you. So I just take my white yarn and I bring it out at the end of the toe. And then I kind of eyeball where I think the where I think the the toenail is going to be. And then I satin stitch about four times. That seems to be enough. I'm going to go and put a, my needle aside for now. And I'm going to get my size 11 hook again. And this time I'm going to put my feet together. Try to figure out how, how I want them to sit. And so I want them to sit about right there. And I am going to join the feet together. So I join my feet together with a slip stitch and then in the stitch that I joined it in the slip stitch with but on this foot over here I think that's the my left side of the foot I am going to put in a single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet in each of the next stitches all the way around and I will end up with, with 36 single crochets. Okay, so we've done 36 stitches and we're right back here to the center in the front. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm actually, this is where I'm going to put my stitch marker to indicate where my stitch is in. Because from here on in for the rest of the body, I am going to crochet in a spiral. So we'll just continually crochet as we go along and and this stitch marker will help us make sure that our seam is straight and that we're keeping our count straight. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and in the next single crochet I want to single crochet and I want to continue that around for a count of 13. So that's three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then 13. And in that 13th stitch, I'm going to do one additional single crochet. 
and then I'm going to single crochet one single crochet in the next five stitches one two three four five right here in the center this and in this fifth stitch right here I want to do an additional single crochet and then again I'm going to single crochet in the next five stitches three four and five and then I want to put an additional single crochet in that same stitch and then I should have 13 more stitches to go and that'll be a single crochet in each one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and it brings us back to the stitch marker at 13. So that now leaves us with a total of 39 stitches all the way around. And then the next four rows is going to be a continuation of the of the 39 stitches. So you need the 39 single crochets once, twice, then three and four more times. Okay, so now we've completed those last four rows, and that should put us at about at 12 rows. So you had a total of six rows for the feet and legs, and then when you joined, you had row seven and then row eight, 10, 11, and then 12. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to decrease. So we're going to do in this next round row, in this next round, we're going to do a single crochet and then an invisible decrease, a single crochet and then an invisible decrease all the way around. So a single crochet and then an invisible decrease. A single crochet and then an invisible decrease. Continue that pattern all the way around. You can see how that decrease is starting to cinch in your body. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet in each stitch all the way around for this next row. For row 17, we're going to alternate single crochet with an invisible decrease stitch in order to decrease or bring this start bringing in this body to the pointy head so single crochet and then our invisible decrease single crochet and our invisible decrease single crochet and our invisible 
decrease. And we're going to continue that all the way around for row 17. Okay, so at this point, I'm actually going to start stuffing the body. So I'm going to get the legs stuffed and the body stuffed. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I have these tails from the legs that I've kind of just left out. I'm going to use this so as, as kind of a way to help keep the stuffing down in the legs. So this is a tip. When I put the stuffing in the legs, because I don't want the stuffing over time to migrate through, I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to weave it back and forth a little bit through the stuffing in the leg, tacking it onto the, the fabric itself. And what that'll do is that'll actually hold the stuffing relatively in place in that leg so it doesn't migrate too much. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and get that stuffed. And I'm going to weave these tails into the leg area, and I will see you in just a moment. So I now have my, my pillow monster stuffed. I know I'm a little close to the camera. And what I'm going to do next is, so this next round, or this next row, I am going to single crochet. And because it's a little hard to see or do this underneath the camera at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and do my single crochet row. And then I'll come back and tell you what to do next. So we've completed the row of the single crochet. And then our next row is going to be the alternating single crochet and invisible double crochet. So I know it's really hard to see that here um, underneath this camera. So we're, I'm just going to um, going to leave you here again to finish up this next row, which will again be a single crochet and an invisible decrease. Alternate those two stitches. And we'll see you back here in just a minute. Two rows left. The next row is single crochet stitches in each stitch. And then the final row is going to be our alternating single crochet invisible decrease single or invisible decrease stitch and I'll see you right back after we've completed those next two rows and I will let you know what to do next okay so our body should look like this I don't know if you can kind of see that in the screen a little bit yeah okay so I've had to move things around a little bit so that we can better see our monsters and so you can see we're about row 21 and this is what the top should look like and what we're going to do now is we're going to stuff him a little more so that he has more of a pointy head sort of like in this one you can kind of see in the back how the head goes up a little bit so we're going to stuff this some more in order to resemble more the shape of its buddy So now that I've stuffed this pillow monster as much as I want to and shaped him out a little bit, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my yarn. And then with my yarn needle, I'm going to do a running stitch around that opening and I'm going to cinch it closed. And that is what's going to create the top of my head. And I have a bit of an extra tail here. And so I'm going to use this extra tail to um, 
do some more sewing. And so we've got, we still have horns and ears to put on, on this, this pillow monster. So I'm going to just leave this tail on there because we'll end up using it here in just a moment. So I've put my monster aside for the moment. Now I'm going to show you how to make the ears. I have one already made here and I'm going to make the second ear. And so, of course, we're going to use the same velvet yarn. And I'm going to leave a bit of a tail so that I can use that to help sew, keep my ear stable on the side of my monster's head. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain six. And then one more. And then in the second chain from my hook, I'm going to do a single crochet. And then in the next chain, I'm going to do a half double crochet. And then the next three chains, a double crochet in each. And I'm going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then that very last stitch, I'm going to put three single crochets. It's going to be the rounded part of the bottom of the ear. And then I'm going to work my way up the other side of this chain. And so I'm going to do a half double crochet across from the half double crochet that was on the other side. And then a double crochet in the next stitch. And a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So that'll be a total of three double crochets. And then a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then a single crochet in that very tip top stitch. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to give myself kind of a, a, a bit of a tail because again I will use this also to sew my ear onto the head of my monster and then I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to do a running stitch, but I'm not going to do it tight. Just right down the center, right down the center of this ear. Right in those chain stitches. And I'm going to pull it through, but I'm not going to pull it tight because I don't want it to cinch. And I'm just going to bring it right down to the base. And this is also where I'm going to, going to connect my ears to the head. So with my body, and now my ears, I'm going to kind of decide about where I want them to sit. And I think I'm going to want my ears to sit probably right about here, right about where we begin the, the decreases. That's kind of a good place. And just, you know, just right there on the side, just on the side of the head. Because the eye is going to go right there in the center. So we'll go ahead and get those ears sewn on right now. And I'll be right back with you. We now have all of our ends woven in, have our ears connected to the body. And this little pillow monster is ready for all of his extra details, or her details in this case. We're going to make this one a female companion to our other guy. So the next thing we're going to do is Miss Pillow Monster's horn. I'm actually going to give her two horns. Mr. Pillow Monster has one horn, if you remember correctly. So the first horn I've already put on, and the second horn, I'm going to actually show you how I do that. Now, 
Miss Pillow Monster's horns are actually done exactly the same way as Mr. Pillow Monster's horns. The only difference is I am going to chain 50 for each of her horns when I make my fabric. And when I do the Mr. Pillow Monster horn, I'm actually going to chain 100 for his. Otherwise, everything's completely the same as what you're going to see me do here. It's going to be the same width of fabric. It's going to be the same spiral technique. Um, the only difference is at 50 count, it makes the horn much smaller. And so I can fit two of them onto Miss Pillow Monster's head. And at 100 count, it makes my horn much longer and a little thicker. Same width of fabric, just an extra 50 chain worth of length. So 100 chain length total and I get his one single horn. So we'll go ahead and get started. I've already chained 50. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chain an additional two for my turning chain. And in that third chain from the hook, I am going to half double crochet. And I'm going to half double crochet in each chain stitch. So at the end, I will have 50 half double crochets. So I've completed my 50 half double crochets. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to half double crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to half double crochet in each of the stitches all the way into the end, giving me 50 more half double crochets and then I will fasten it off. Okay, so as you can see, I've just completed two rows, 50 count of half double crochets. I'm going to tie this off, fasten it off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making the spiral. And how I do that is first I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to thread this size five velvet onto my needle. And then I'm going to take this corner where my tail is and I'm just gonna fold that over like so. And then I'm going to sort of sew it together so that I have a nice little tip. And again, doesn't have to be horribly perfect. This velvet yarn is pretty forgiving. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pretty much leave my tail just like that. I'm going to set my needle aside. And then I'm going to get my gold yarn because I've decided that I like the gold on this kind of creamy velvet yarn. And so I like the way this gold yarn accents that. And I'm going to take the gold yarn. I'm going to hold it in my left hand, at least just for the moment. I'm going to start folding over the fabric. So this is what it looks like after I sew it. And I'm going to fold it over. And this is where it gets a little tricky because I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to insert it into that part of the fabric, into that stitch that just sits right underneath the fold. I'm going to fold it over and I'm also going to go through the stitch directly behind it on the fabric that lays underneath it when I fold it over. And from there, I'm going to pick up my gold yarn. like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick or insert my hook into the next chain and it gets a little fiddly, especially when you're just getting started on it. And then also I'm going to put my hook inserted into the next chain on the fabric that the top fabric lays over. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull that thread all the way through that yarn all the way through. 
and that gives me my first slip stitch. And so this is pretty much what I'm going to do all the way down. I'm going to spiral it by laying the fabric over on top of itself and then doing a slip stitch in each stitch and making sure that I pick up the fabric and the stitch or the stitch of the fabric right behind it. So I'm going to do that. And then again, I'm going to go into the fabric behind it. And then it's a little tricky. I'm trying to do this upside down so I can kind of show you, at least upside down for me. And when you first start it, it's always tricky at the very beginning until you get a little more room to maneuver. And you're going to get a little more room because your spiral is going to start widening so you can more easily get a finger in there in which to control what you're doing. And then when you do that, then you can find your rhythm better. So, and again, I'm going to do this a few more times so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. Right, so, we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to pull it through. And then again, into the next stitch and the next stitch beneath it. And as you do this, you're going to travel in that spiral direction and so you're going to do that by following the edge you know i'm going to connect this edge basically just slightly overlap the the edge of the fabric that it folds over on so that gives us our spiral effect now if you want a longer thinner horn just make sure that this edge is as close or as, as tightly overlapped on the edge right behind it. If you want a thicker horn or a fatter horn, then just make sure that your top fabric overlaps more of the width of the bottom part of the fabric. Or I should say the underneath fabric. So now I think you can really see the horn starting to take some shape. And I got a little more room to work with. So now things are, are going a little more smoothly. I'm more able to, to find a rhythm that is easier to work with at this point. And so you're going to continue this way. All the way down and so you can already see how we got the point of the horn and as I continue to do the chain stitch spiral my chain stitch down and overlap that fabric this is what you're going to start seeing as it overlaps you know, you're going to actually start seeing a horn and the gold yarn really accents makes a nice accent for the spiral embellishment on the horn itself I think you can see that We've got both horns sewn on to our head, body, and feet. Miss Pillow Monster now has her horns. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do her giant eye. Now, the Mr. Pillow Monster has a yellow eye. For her, I'm going to give her a pink eye. I am going to start with black for the pupil. And as usual, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an adjustable ring. And in that adjustable ring, I'm going to single crochet six single crochets. Okay. 
my ring tight and I'm going to slip stitch in that first stitch this is black so it's going to be a little hard for you to see this I'm sure all right and then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to do two single crochets in the same stitch and two single crochets in each additional stitch so I'll end up with 12 total single crochets in row, row two And I'm going to slip stitch in that first single crochet and I'm going to chain. And then in row three, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to do a, or actually I'm going to do two single crochets in the next stitch and then a single crochet. In the next stitch and then two single crochets in the next stitch that will give me a total of 18 stitches in round three and i'm going to fasten off the black because i'm going to get ready to change colors so i'm just going to go ahead and do a slip stitch And because I decided I'm going to do pink for her eye, I've decided I'm going to do these three color pinks. So I'm going to take my darkest color pink. And that's going to be the first color change that I do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a slip stitch in that same space. And then I'm going to single crochet my dark pink in that same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet again in the next stitch. And then in my third stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. So then I'm going to, in the next stitch, I'm going to do a single crochet and then a single crochet in the next stitch. And then the stitch after that, I'm going to do two single crochets. And I'm going to follow this pattern all the way around. And that's going to leave me with 24 stitches. Okay, so now that I have my 24 stitches, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fasten off by just making a slip stitch of this dark pink color. Then I'm going to move to my medium pink. And I'm going to slip stitch in that very first single crochet. And then I'm going to do an addition, a single crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch and then in that third stitch and then also in that fourth stitch and in that fourth stitch I am going to do an additional single crochet so you're going to have three single crochets and then two single crochets in the same stitch three single crochets and then two single crochets in the same stitch three single crochets and then two in the same stitch next one so you're going to follow that pattern 
and you're going to end up with a total of 30 stitches in row five. You're going to fasten off, put a slip stitch, and we're going to change color to the light pink. And that stitch, that first single crochet, gonna go ahead and slip stitch. Do a single crochet in that very first stitch. And then I'm going to do three more single crochets in the following stitches. That'll give me four single crochets, one single crochet in each stitch. And then in that fifth stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. So four single crochets in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then two single crochets in the next stitch. And we're going to follow that pattern all the way around for a total of 36 stitches. Okay, now we're going to end this light color pink with a slip stitch. And I'm going to do one more round of the dark color pink. Slip stitch, single crochet in that first single crochet. And I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. And that will give me five single crochets. And then in that sixth stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. And I'm going to single crochet a single crochet in the next five stitches. And then in that sixth stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. And I'm going to continue that pattern all the way around for a total of 48 stitches. in this row eight. So now I'm gonna end this color, of course as usual with a slip stitch. And then we're going to make our color change to black again. So our new color change is black and we've started off in that first single crochet with a slip stitch and then another single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet an additional five single crochets giving us six single crochets and then in the next stitch in that seventh stitch we're going to do two single crochets and then six single crochets and 
and in that seventh stitch, two single crochets. So again, a single crochet in the next six stitches. And then in that seventh stitch, two single crochets. And we'll continue that pattern all the way around. Okay, and so for row eight, we should have 48 stitches all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch and fasten off that color. And we're going to begin our next color, which is white. And then single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet an additional six stitches. Four, five, six. Make a total of one more, makes a total of seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to do two single crochets in that eighth stitch. So in the next seven stitches, I'm going to do a single crochet. And then in the eighth stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. And again, seven, and then two, and I'm going to do that all the way around. Slip stitch, and then I'm going to go ahead and make a chain. So for this row nine, I should have 54 stitches. And then for rows 10, 11, and 12, I'm going to use white and I'm going to single crochet in each stitch. So for each row should have also 54 stitches. So this is what we have so far. Pretty pink eye. So next I'm going to do, I'm going to take the red and again, and go into that first single crochet, make a slip stitch, and I'm going to single crochet. And I'm going to single crochet again. I'm going to put in two single crochets. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay. So now I've got my eye. And I'm going to finish that off. But in this case, I'm going to leave a pretty sizable tail because I'm going to use this tail to shape and sew my eyeball onto my monster's head. Now I'm going to bring down my monster and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to figure out how I want to put that eye on there. And so in this particular case because this eye turned out a little flatter than I would have liked it to probably because of the the yarn that I'm using here, it's not the same as all the other yarn. It's, it happens to be what I happen to have in my in my scrap bag. So what I'm going to do in that case, because you may run into the same problem as well, I am going to take my red yarn and I'm going to weave it through the edge of this eye and just pull the yarn a little bit to kind of cinch it to give it more a rounded appearance. 
So once I cinch my eye a little bit so that I have some definition to my eye, I'm going to sew my eye onto the face of my monster. And I'm going to leave a little area open so that I can push stuffing in there. And so I could really fill out that eye and give it its rounded appearance before closing it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then, okay, so I've made a few adjustments so that we can try and see this, this little monster better. And so you can see her eye and it's stitched on and I've got it stuffed. And then this little sparkle in her eye. That's real simple to make. Just do an adjustable ring and then put your six single crochets in there. Tighten your ring, slip stitch that together and sew it on. So now all we have left to do for her is to give her her toothy grin and to put some hair on her head. And we'll get right to that here in just one moment. Okay, so now we're going to get started with the toothy grins. And in order to do that, I've already got one, the grin for Mrs. Pillow Monster started. And the way I did that was I determined about how long I wanted her grin to be. And so I chained that length. And in her case, it was about a chain of 30 stitches. Then I chained an additional two more chains to use as my turning chains. And then I came back with half double crochets. So I incorporated 30 half double crochets along the length and I finished it off. So this is basically the top part of her grin. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my piece around so that the, the chain side is on top of the fabric. And I'm going to start my teeth. And how I do that is I'm going to get my white yarn and I'm going to go right here into this edge stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain four. Next thing I'm going to do is do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then a half double crochet in the third chain and then a double crochet in that last chain. And then I'm going to skip a stitch and in the next stitch I'm going to single crochet. And that gives me my first, first tooth. And so I'm going to do this again. I'm going to chain four. I'm going to single crochet in the first chain from the, or the second chain from the hook, and then a half double crochet in the next chain, and then a double crochet in that last chain. I'm going to skip this single crochet right here, and in the next single crochet, I am going to connect my tooth with a single crochet. And chain four again. And then, of course, a single crochet in the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in the next chain, and then the double crochet. And again, skip a stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. So we're going to complete this and then I'll be right back. So this is what that's going to look like when you get through the whole mouth. And in this case, I'm leaving a nice long tail because this is what I'm going to use to help sew the mouth on with. Then we have one more thing. We have the red, the redness of the gums. And that we're going to just go ahead and do that via a slip stitch. So I'm going to make my slip knot, of course. I'm going to insert my hook right here. And basically that's where I'm going to kind of tie it off at. And then I'm just going to go down in each one of these stitches 
each one of these single crochets and I am going to make a slip stitch. Just along that gum line, right above the teeth. And now you should have something that looks like this and ready to be sewn into place. And before we sew it into place, I'm actually going to go on and discuss the hair. So now for my Mr. Pillow Monster, I simply took his hair, and I think you can kind of see it here. And what I did was I just made long strips of chains, just chained lots and lots of different colors and then I just sewed them into loops on his head and so that gave gives us this kind of texture of this kind of short curly kind of kind of hair if you will but for my Mrs. Pillow Monster I wanted to give her curls and so what I did was I crocheted these curls now most of you I'm assuming already know how to achieve this technique but for those who don't, I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you how to do that. The rest of you can just jump ahead if you like. So I'm going to use this green. And for these particular curls, because, well, these curls can be done in a lot of different ways. They can be looser. They can be tighter. You can do them with single crochets, half double crochets, double crochets. This one I want kind of a, kind of a medium tightness. For my hair and so this is the one that I'm going to show you how I do and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet a length of 50 chains at least that's what I did for the curls that I'm putting on my Mrs. Monster but here I'm not going to do so much I'm just going to do enough to kind of give you the idea of how to get that curl effect So now that I have the desired length of chain that I'm going to use as an example for you, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to double crochet in the second chain from the hook once and then twice. And then again, I'm going to do two double crochets in that next chain. And then also in the third chain, two double crochets. So I'm going to continue to do this until I get the length of, of curls that I want. And as you can already see, what's happening is the fabric is starting to curl over on itself. And that's exactly what we want to see. Now that I have the length of curl that I want, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then I'll just do a single crochet in all the other following chains. You can see, and this is what you end up with. And this is what I'm going to put on her head for her curls. And so I'm going to take a couple of minutes to get the mouth and the hair sewn on. And then when we come back, I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so now we have finished with her. So as you can see, I just sewed on the mouth and the toothy grin. And then the hair, you just decide where you wanted to put those curls. Or if you don't like the curls, you, you know, it's you can do anything on the body that you want. You can customize these guys to be anything. 
and look any way or appeal to anybody you would like them to appeal to. And we have the Mr. Pillow Monster. So they're awesome and they're fun. And any kid, adult or young, would love to have one. Well, that's about it for today's tutorial. I again want to thank you very much for sticking it out with me. And as usual, have a most creative and amazing day.